Hey guys, welcome to another video here at Financial Hub. I'm your boy, Caleb Sami Trades, and I'm going to break down the markets for you. What we do on a usual weekly basis. And this week, as usual, like I said last week, I'll be showing you my weekly billionaire people for the week, why I'm looking into them, why I'm paying attention to them. And yeah, so like I said, I'll be paying attention to the Bloomberg's Billionaire Index, which tracks every single day the portfolios, the market cap, the investments, all those things combined of the world's 500 richest people. And like I said, I don't call them richest, I call them wealthy because I believe rich and wealthy mean two different things. And these people are not rich, they're dumb wealthy. Cool? So. This week, who am I looking at? Bernard Arnold. Now, Bernard Arnold is number one richest person in the world according to Bloomberg Billionaires Index. Now, I love Bernard Arnold. I knew Bernard Arnold when he wasn't the richest person. He, I knew him some time back and he's someone who really motivated me uh, back then. Now, uh, something about him, who is Bernard Arnold? Now, Arnold is the chairman of LVMH, Moet, Hennessy, Louis Vuitton, the world's largest, and I repeat, largest maker of luxury goods. When you think about Bernard Arnold, you think about luxury. The billionaire controls half of LVMH with a revenue of 86 billion euros, which is roughly 93 billion dollars um as of 2023 now kenya has a gdp of about 130 billion this one company alone had a revenue of about a hundred billion dollars so that's how big this company is it sells products includes including louis vuitton leather goods tag your watches and dom perignon champagne if you've never had a dom perignon my friend you have a long way to go personally i have not had it yet but once i do i will be back here to announce that i did and say that i'm now part of the luxury uh, category of people <laughs> in a light note okay so lvmh controls a lot lvmh owns uh, fenty if you know rihanna it owns christian dior it owns sephora it owns all those luxury goods that you know of it owns those ones it owns a lot of watches a lot of uh, drinking companies moet if you know if you know moet hennessy and all those things included now it's a large luxury brand that controls a lot of market share in the luxury goods around the world now he is from france okay if you look at the top 10 richest people in the world all of them come from the us except bernard donald who is number one in the world coming from france so you can imagine how proud france is of him the next person from france comes quite low down there so the margin gap is quite huge okay now i opened a video here if you want to know who bernard donald is Come and watch this documentary so just search bernard and all documentary watch this one by cnbc okay the brave ones i watched this one a couple of years back i think even that six years ago when it came out and trust you me this will give you a good breakdown i even watched it to again today morning i've watched it multiple times just to get that motivation understanding and to know what these rich people are doing so go and watch bernard Arnold, the chairman and ceo of Louis, uh, lvmh watch this video and you're going to understand a big part of what he does how he started taking control of these companies because he didn't um, create any of these companies he went purchasing 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 so watch and see what he did to become that rich a random fact foundation of louis vuitton building in paris is designed by frank gary i don't know who that is but one day when we become billionaires we will get to know who that is okay so you can see he had a peak of 230 billion right now his net worth is roughly at 213 billion two times almost two times as big as the economy as the gdp of kenya here at our country cool so i won't go deep into what he has you can see he has cash of about 16 billion and he has his net worth um, in different public assets at 197 billion okay what he's doing with those cash in his house or whatever wherever they are in the bank i do not know but that's what he does now i don't spend too time and go through this you can go through the page and read it for yourself but louis vuitton uh ceo bernard arnold is one of my best billionaires in uh the top 500 wealthiest people in the world now my second person for today we all know him elon musk now why is elon musk on my list this week is because this past week on friday i went and purchased his book um at the bookstore in prestige in town uh my partners and i are a big fan of reading books now if you 
we we left school some time back and we focused on reading books we didn't leave school and started focusing on having fun and partying and all that now nah, we went deep into books now nah, I, I bought his physical book this last uh, weekend uh, ken and i and we are waiting to dig deep and read his book um why this book um i really love elon musk we read his previous book by ashley vance it was quite a small book but wasn't that deep now this next edition was by isaac uh walter isaacson and we're a big fan of walter isaacson we read his book previously that he did on steve jobs and the good thing about walter isaacson is that he's good he's respected so those um people let him come into their life and he can spend time with them so walter isaacson spent two years with elon musk his family his colleagues his adversaries all those people and got a lot of perspective on who elon musk is his story and how he became the elon musk that we know today so i bought a book and and this weekend and this coming weeks i'll be digging deep to understand him well so read books get motivated understand how this person became the wealthiest person in the world okay now elon musk is one of the biggest losers this year as much as he is number three on the list number three number three on the list um he is still the biggest loser if you look at his net worth he has dropped about 26 billion dollars this year okay and he's still number three uh top three richest people in the world okay when you look at ytd that means year to date so from january to now that's the amount of money the other people have made that's the amount of money he has lost this year so far okay so elon musk is the ceo of tesla the world's most valuable car maker i think that was surpassed the other day by another company but we'll come back to that the austin texas based company sells electric vehicles and home solar batteries musk's also one of uh musk's also the ceo of space uh, spacex a rocket manufacturer tapped by n by nasa to resupply the space station and own social networking company x previously known as twitter so that's him and that's another person we have on the week this week so i won't spend too much time here we're here for analyzing the markets and looking at what the markets has to tell us so so those are my two people for the week uh bernard arnold elon musk all each of them have a uh, combined net worth of 400 billion dollars trust you me even if they spend 10 million dollars a day they cannot finish that money until they die okay so that's it that's those people very rich makes too much money in a day and i like them i like reading about them i like looking to up towards them understanding what they do and then understanding how they came to be who they are today they all started with zero network they were ordinary people and that's something i like about the list of most people in the top 500 are self-made billionaires started from nothing and made it all the way up to become something so that's elon musk and now i'll jump straight into the markets and look at what the markets have for us so random fact musk was paid a minimum wage under the california law never accepted it so the minimum wage he was being paid i think a, a dollar i think so never accepted it but anyway that's for the top five wealthiest people in the world and next i'm going to dive into the markets okay so first things first what are the fundamentals of the week last week we had hot news we had interest rates that came out uh two from two major banks the bank of canada boc and ecb the e, uh, european central bank all of them lowered their interest rates by 25 basis points that is 0.25 percent you can see previous the interest rates at canada was five percent they lowered it to 4.75 the market reacted to that quite heavily also we could see that the ecb had their interest rates at 4.5 and they lowered it to 4.25 last week so inflation is being capped they're controlling inflation and now they're trying to stimulate the economy to push back the economy up and they've started cutting interest rates now remember interest rates is the backbone of any economy interest rates any economy any financial markets capital markets interest rates is what controls that because interest rates is what controls the supply and demand of currency in any country and we can't get deep into that because my partner uh, teaches that in the class of fundamentals uh, that he that we do here at financial hub so you can come for the classes and get a deep understanding of what interest rates are and how they affect employment inflation uh economic growth 
and such stuff so so and then to end the week we had nfp non-farm payrolls last week okay we had very positive data okay you can see previous we had 165,000 previous data and then forecast of people was at 182,000 and markets almost nearly double that with a hundred thousand extra of not really double but 150 percent more than expected at 270 thousand dollars now that was positive news for the dollar and how did the dollar react we had very very bullish data okay very bullish data and that's what we're going to look at in a few so so, so what happened last week so a few things happened last week i'd like to update first i had a shot on gold i had a very good shot on gold and if you look at what happened on gold on friday alone during nfp markets fell 3.5 percent okay it was more than 3.5 percent markets fell almost a thousand pips we had a top of 23.88 around there 87 and markets closed at 23 what was the low the low was 23 22.86 i mean so that was a thousand pip drop on that day beautiful drop however i didn't make money okay so this happens okay just speak about the reality now you know i trade a lot of flags and flags is what i was looking to trade so i've gone short on a flag trade okay now this was the flag i was looking at now that was not my entry point okay my entry point was here now i was very patient for market to impulse we had sort of a sideways movement for quite some time and i waited for markets to go and tap the 2375 key level okay that was a key level for me and take a short position at that point okay now i got that short position now if you look at my last week analysis when was that i believe that was wednesday or thursday I was looking for gold now this was gold at first this was on wednesday okay and i was very patient this was a big picture one now when market was starting to come up on the one hour we had a smaller flag that was looking like this did i take this trade at 23.52 hell no okay what was i patient for i was waiting for the bigger picture four hour okay this is the four hour flag and this was a one hour okay this was one hour now i normally don't push too much on trading the one hour especially once market has tapped that level many times expect it to be broken okay now the four hour candlestick you need to really dig deep and look at the candlestick individually and read it because candlesticks are representation of everything that is happening in the markets the fundamentals the technical the psychology the mass thinking all that is embedded in the price so for me the four hour is quite significant to tell me what is happening in the market now you can see what i was saying after this close okay I am waiting for clear rejection so after this close i cannot enter this candlestick represents a very bullish information markets during that session pushed down to that low pushed back up and was closing around that level i cannot take that trade and that's why i did not execute on the one hour okay so what did i wait for i waited for thursday the 6th of june okay now 6th of june you can see now after that candlestick we are looking at on wednesday markets really pushed up we went to the 23 uh, 72 so this was early in the morning this was around 6 a.m so i waited for a clear rejection okay and markets got this clear rejection during pre-london session you can see market pushed to that level uh respecting the 2375 level market started closing and i took that shot okay you can see my stops were about 100 around 2382 around that level is where i had my stops after getting a good entry at 2370 so i had about 100 120 pips stop loss which is quite uh comfortable for me on gold and that's what i waited for okay now what happened on friday no that same thursday markets pushed down quite well we went back to the 23.55 level markets rejected that level pushed up took me out now you can see this candlestick really pushed up and took me out we hit a high of 23.87 okay and that took me out now this candlestick was a good rejection to re-enter the trade however on friday now this is some disparity a lot of you might be experiencing okay you get a lower a different broker giving different information so if you look for gold i was looking at gold i wasn't using my laptop on friday it was nfp I was quite not really paying attention to the markets so i was using my phone i had a lot of meetings up and down in town and here there so i was watching the market on uh the what is it called uh my phone okay now the gold on my phone was xau usd was i think i was using oanda 
Let me see. Yes, I was using Oanda. Okay, now look at this candlestick. Sort of similar represents the one that I've just previously shown you. Now, once market closed at that level, okay, that is bullish data for me. Market had failed to close below the 2375 key level, pushed and closed above like this, okay. Now, you see that that this was different information for me. This candlestick does not allow me to go short, okay, and I didn't see the other one that closed. Um, now, this one that I'm using, Paperstone, okay? This, I'm using a different broker, which is Paperstone. The other one was Oanda. This was a different close, giving different information. So, you see how important different brokers can cause you to make or lose money, okay? So, pay attention to that. Find the clean uh, candlesticks that you want to look at with the brokers of choice. Now, depending on the broker you want, it doesn't mean all the time Oanda will show wrong signals, okay? On the one hour candlestick, all flags are the same. So if you're on the lower time frame, you're totally fine. But if you're coming up on the four hour in the bigger pictures, now those ones tend to really fluctuate. So for me, that showed different information and it caused me not to take a trade on that pair however after that market strongly fell okay this was in the morning okay so that was still a good entry what i normally do even if it's nfp nfp came out at 3 30 later on in the afternoon 3 30 was around this time okay once market had already dropped if i had that trade and i took that trade at this level i'd have already broken even if news was to take me out i'd have come out at break even however when the news came out the data came out more than expected gold moved to targets and fell all the way to the lower level okay so anyway that's what i had for last week don't focus too much on the past yaliyo mwagika yaliyo Kiswahili is tricky. So, Yalio Peter uh, seen well something, okay? But anyway, that's what happened last week and that's what happened. So, 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 this week, what am I looking at? Now, gold has come back to a major level on the daily chart. If you look at this, okay? Now, this is a strong, important level that we need to pay attention to, okay? If market breaks below this level, now look at this. Like I said, you need to learn to read data. The data is the information. The candlestick is always giving you information about the markets. Now, what is this? Market was moving from higher highs, higher lows. Now, notice market reached this high, got a higher low, failed to create a new high, okay? So it was sort of a, a, a slight high, okay? On the daily chart, this was a slight high. Market closed as a shooting star. We got more of a double top uh, rejection and market fell all the way down. Now we are back to the previous support level. Now this previous support level will mean two things. If market strongly breaks and closes below, trust you me, then I'll be really shifting to focusing more on sales than I will longs, okay? But if market rejects this level, and closes back above, I'll still be looking for longs as long as we're above this level. So for me, I'm waiting for that decision factor. I'll wait and see which candlestick will reject this level. Will market be able to reject and push further up or break below, close below, which will for me now put, excuse me, put gold on a strong bearish narrative. If you look at the weekly chart, okay market has been moving to the upside and rejecting a couple of levels but this level market has been unable to break above you can see on my analysis i even wrote weak bulls are in the market a lot of people have taken profits at this level and it's showing weakness from the bullish players okay this we can uh, um, result to further corrections to the downside pushing markets further lower okay so that's what i'll be looking at on the four hour chart nothing much that was just the analysis i was looking at so now i'm paying attention to this level let's see will this level hold will this level break that is the question for this week okay uh moving on to another pair Aussie dollar the same thing will happen or more or less like what has happened on gold if you look at the daily chart market has been moving to the upside forming higher highs higher lows however we have been unable to break above and create a new high what happened instead on the daily chart you can see market was moving in a good narrative to the upside we got a new high higher low we failed to create a new high now market has broken below the previous higher low now for me um Aussie dollar is in a bearish face at this moment we've failed to create a new high looking at the four hour here you can see market has been pushing higher 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 failing to create that strong new high we had a bit of a consolidation here and last week on friday nfp acted as a catalyst to push markets to a new um to new lows breaking the previous structure of higher highs higher lows so for me i'll be looking for further corrections to see whether we can get some shots on this pair to push the markets lower if you look at the weekly chart markets have been rejecting okay been rejecting this uh, resistance trend line okay the downside trend line 
rejection there rejection rejection and another rejection here looking at that weekly close trust me you do not want to go against that strong close market hits at a high came in close below this resistance level our key level was watching and markets are below that level so for aussie dollar also this week heavily on the shorts if you can get some corrections along this level okay around this point you can get some correction then i'll be looking to short the markets further to the downside after that move that was formed last week and this equivalent to what was happened on usd card as well markets pushed to the upside okay push to the upside if you look at the daily chart markets have continued moving to the upside look the daily chart the narrative has never been broken markets have been forming new highs higher high we got a big consolidation a big correction but last week on friday market pushed to the upside when we got that confirmation that markets were moving to the upside okay so the four hour looking for further corrections on this one as well i see some resistance coming in at this point 20 i mean the 1.3 780 level around this region okay to get some correction and then later on in the week i'll be looking for some bullish moves to the upside on uh, the usd card sour sour so those are what i'm watching this week uh don't to dive deep into the other pairs like i said you know the pairs i trade maybe in a different video i'll come and analyze the other pairs once i get a good understanding of them but if i look at the dollar just one last thing before we change because i said i look at this you can see here when the nfp came out with the better than expected results it gave nar a bullish narrative uh, uh on the dollar and that's why you're seeing dollar really push to the upside if you look at the daily chart market rejected this support level okay you can see this support level market has rejected it and we got that strong push to the upside which could mean that markets could move further to the upside in the next coming weeks okay you can see this level was supported market came to that same level sort of got a double top in the direction i mean a double bottom in the upward direction of the trend and that level could hold to push markets to the upside you can see the current structures being broken lower low lower high lower low lower high fail to create a strong low breaking above the previous lower high and this could push markets to the upside on the four hour chart same thing as well you're seeing the same narrative market has broken above that level and we could see markets rallying further up of course some correction along the way i never predict where a correction will begin but we could see some correction coming in maybe today and tomorrow and wednesday and just for thursday and friday the trend to continue to the upside if for a fact market has changed direction so, so, so those are my analysis for this week that's what i'm watching on the markets those are my people uh the billionaires that i've talked about for this week and yes that is basically what i'm watching for this week so a bullish narrative on the us dollar my main focus on most of my pairs is quite uh dollar related so all my pairs are also dollar dominated okay Salsa. So that's basically my analysis for this week. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you've had a good one. And I'll be here next week to cover again. And Ken will join you as well in some other video. And we'll continue analyzing the markets together. Salsa. So that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed. Like I always say, stay woke, stay financially literate. May the peeps be with you. See you in the next video. Peace.